Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Digital Healthwire show. My name is Jason Berry, and I'm the editor of Digital Healthwire and the host of the show. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Medallion's VP of Product and Design, Aaron Joseph. Aaron, it's good to see you here. Nice to meet you, Jason. And yeah, thanks for uh, spending time with me. My pleasure. Um, before we dive too deep into Medallion, I think it would be really valuable to set the stage with kind of the current state of provider network operations, what it is and what the current state looks like, and maybe some of the historical problems that have kind of really weighed this space down. There's a ton of manual labor. It's a really cumbersome workflows. Can you kind of set the stage by walking us through all that? Yeah, so, you know, provider operations have been historically fragmented, you know, slow and burdened by a lot of manual workflow. It leads to credentialing delays, prepare enrollment and in privileging. I think the way to frame it up, though, is these healthcare organizations are trying to go from I've hired a, a provider or in the process of hiring a provider and getting them billable. What are all the operations that need to happen through there? And a lot of that has been on paper, stored in a spreadsheet, trying to use software to get these pro processes to work. But if they don't, it's ultimately impacting patient care and, and basically the revenue cycle leakage that happens inside of these healthcare organizations. Um, and a lot of the legacy software and systems that, that drive this has just been uh, given, you know, has a lack of real-time visibility, a lack of, you know, um, ways of reporting on what's working, what's not working. And so th there's just a lot of um, intransparency to the whole process. Medallion puts out great reports like on this whole space, your state of payer enrollment and credentialing. Um, the numbers, like the expense, A, how long it takes, but B, how expensive it is to have lag in all of these processes always blow my mind. Can you kind of give us an idea of how long the historically these processes have taken? Yeah. So, you know, just take payer enrollment, for example, uh, payer enrollment uh, uh, in some companies, because, you know, you're taking an individual provider and they need to be enrolled in somewhere between, you know, five to 20 um, health plans can be on average like 180 days for an individual uh, provider. And so what that means is all that time is getting loaded up into a person that likely cannot provide care during that time. And so if you take the salary of any of those one providers and multiply it by the number of days that they can't actually provide care or be billable or you know questionable on its billability, you're getting into the hundreds of thousands of dollars of territory per provider. So that could be very, very painful for an organization, which again, their goal is not to even think about this. Their goal is to make sure they're providing care at cost and quickly in a way that's a network for patients. Well put. Um, and then enter Medallion. H how is Medallion, let's, let's take a bird's eye view of Medallion's platform. And then yeah. how are you kind of automating away some of the friction that's leading to these huge cost sinks, like you're saying? Yeah, so Medallion is a platform that at its base is collecting, managing, and verifying provider data uh, on behalf of these organizations. And this is to reduce the turnaround time that I just talked about in pay enrollment, as well as licensing, credentialing, uh, and now um, uh, some new areas that we'll talk about later today. And it also is trying to reduce the number of errors because we're using automation, AI, and other tactics to effectively pull in that data in a more a streamlined fashion. And the real-time analytics on those workflows gives organizations ways to see the funnel from the minute that a request is made to uh, get a provider credentialed through the different statuses and steps that it takes to get them to that end outcome of becoming billable. Um, but a lot of the ways that we do that is through direct integration with CAQH, um, MPDB, and other key systems, which streamlines the data ingestion. And you know, one way to think about it is that in some ways, we sit between upstream systems where customers are doing their hiring and then downstream systems where they handle claims, billing, um, scheduling, and other uh, key functions. And so we are that connective glue that, that brings the provider into the organization. Nice. And when you're kind of positioning Medallion against some of the other solutions that are trying to tackle these problems, what is the it factor, the differentiator that makes the platform unique? Yeah. And so, like, you know, there are different options for an organization when they're trying to solve these problems. One, they can go to, in the case of credentialing, a CBO, uh, a credentialing verified organization, which is a services. There's also software, and then they can employ um, different competitive software of ours with people to attack that problem. 
we've taken a hybrid approach to go with what we call end-to-end -end, uh, outcome delivery for customers. And so the key differentiation there is basically we are selling to customers. We will get them the outcome of reducing the turnaround time, reducing the errors, um, and having high accuracy rate on things like uh, files that go to committee for, for credentialing. The way that we're doing that is through you know, things like roster template generation, um, AI document extraction for provider onboarding, um, pulling in data from the CAQH profile directly through an integration that we have, uh, primary source verifications, and, and, and then using um, CAQH to basically automate the process of provider onboarding as an example. So the, the, the core difference that you know, any one customer is choosing when they come to Medallion is you're choosing, do I want to own software and have a big team to manage that software? Or do I want to go with Medallion to get outcomes and, and have a team that is really nimble in being able to solve these problems with a lot of high visibility? Nice. Yeah, when you frame it up end-to-end -end outcome generation, it seems uh, like a no-brainer to go that route. Um, is the, you mentioned that kind of the time to onboarding, like time to complete onboarding is something that you're focusing on. Is that the core metric that you're kind of using to measure the success of the platform? And if you're helping your customers or is there other things that you're looking at? Yeah, and again, it, it, it's dependent on the product lines, but say in pair enrollment, as I mentioned, you know, those end-to-end uh, -end times that are pre-medallion are somewhere in the order of 120 to 180 days. Um, as we're going to uh, focus on outcome generation for, for customers and knowing their payer mix, there's places where we are reducing those down in the case of, in some cases to 75 or even less days. Uh, and so that is true value. As I said, that zero to 75 days means billable on time, uh, on staff schedulable for, for patient care. And so that is a, a big differentiation. In the world of credentialing, um, for us, that's around file accuracy, 99.5% file accuracy while ensuring uh, NCQA and other regulatory compliance. Um, and, and so really just when you look at the total reduced operational cost in an organization, we can do that up to about 78% of their overall operational cost. Again, when they're choosing between software people or just medallion. Um, yeah, that's that's how we think about it. Uh, I got to say, you got the talking points down. You can be the VP of product and sales. And <laughs> the um, uh, is when you're laying out the value proposition and you're laying out uh, option A, option B, or just discussing Medallion in general, is there any like preconceived notions that people have about Medallion that or things about the company and the value prop that they're underweighting? I think from the outside looking in, it's quite hard to peg us into a category. So as you can imagine, right, you know, you go and think like, okay, well, it's a software solution uh, or no, it's a, and you could see on our site, you know, it's a credentialing verified uh, uh, CBO. So when looking at that, it's hard to place us. And so in that kind of situation, to try to figure out, is this self-serve software? Is this a services company? How do we, how do we do this? So I think the, the way to like think about it, as I said, again, and like differentiating us, we just really want to focus on outcomes for customers because we believe that is the best way for us to ensure that we both own how to get them that outcome. Uh, and, and we think that is very differentiated as it, it's quite difficult to get that in the market, right? Um, because any of those other solutions require either a lot of um, uh, change management and trust loss in, in terms of you know putting the whole thing outsourced outside of their organization uh, or having to handle the, the process of software adoption and clunky systems that they, they'd have to cobble together to really make it work. And how do you think about um, kind of guiding product management decisions, steering the ship um, to hit some of these problems and produce these outcomes? Is it you have a grand vision in your head of what would be the best way to do it? Or is it user feedback and they're coming to you with pain points and you're implementing them one at a time? Uh, how do you kind of just at large think about product management? Yeah, so for Medallion, I think the core thing that we have done is build a platform that is inbuilt with automation that we believe will automate away a lot of the problems that um, our customers see and even our internal operations teams see to solving uh, these provider network operations. And basically our product management philosophy has been, let's attack markets where we can use those products and help organizations and then figure out how to replicate that 
um, into um, other segments that we have not been able to you know, serve yet. And so as we are getting larger and larger and getting into a larger enterprise organizations, so that's giving us access to new customers where that same core automation platform and the work that we've done works with our product lines. So it's really a, a platform approach to solving for product management. And then we are really taking customer feedback in, uh, into account and thinking about how um, are, is the feedback, again, across that suite of different segments going to help us solve in our automation platform that gives le uh, leverage and lift to, to all of those customers in ways that, that would basically you know, benefit all. Again, as I said, things like automation of pulling in information about providers does generally net it, uh, get value for, for all of our customers as that's just less work for all of the administrative teams uh, mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Do you find that the customer feedback and like the feature requests, you're working with a ton of different organizations, no two healthcare orgs are quite alike. Um, do you find that it's common that you get something that's like, this would be a good enhancement to the platform? Or are you waiting through a lot of people asking for faster horses and things like that before you get to like new feature ideas? Oh, it's interesting. There's a lot of really um, interesting feedback that is actually applicable across all, but just like any other product management job, right? We have to wade through what is the actual problem they're trying to solve. Are they try to solve something for their internal staff or are they try to solve for the outcome. And so that's really helpful for us in, in framing up like where and what feedback is generally relevant. Um, you know, some some more recent feedback that would be interesting to discuss is, you know, as we go to larger organizations, even though, yeah, as I said, we're this blend end-to-end -end outcome focused company, there are things that at enterprise scale are things that are common across many different segments where we see uh, ways to pull things in. Like, you know, as healthcare organizations, you said none, none two are alike, but one thing that we do know is alike is they're extremely complex. So managing the organizations, the permissions, the visibility of information is something that, you know, we are investing in that we think will pay dividends across a lot of our segments. So, I mean, you kind of hit on a lot of these points, but it's how do, how do you guide the product roadmap? Like what is actually the next feature that we're going to de devote resources to and try to get yep. in front of our customers? How do you prioritize and stack that list? You know, this is, again, um, a little bit unique uh, because of how Medallion thinks about that end-to-end -end focus. So we're thinking about, okay, what are the back office operations that the staff are doing at these companies that we could be helping with that our customers are talking to us about, okay, well, if you just could solve this for us, it would be very helpful. And again, it's quite different than a feature or a specific um, you know, added functionality. It's more about a workflow that their internal staff are, are covering. So, you know, a next big one for us is on privileging. You know, we have found that through doing uh, work in provider groups uh, as well as um, uh, other key organizations, you know, credentialing and payer enrollment have been big topics. But now as we are getting into health system customers, the idea of joint commission credentialing, the idea of hospital applications, which share a lot of the same characteristics as those two products, we found, okay, we can extend a lot of, again, that automation platform and the work that we have done to basically extend into those workflows, which have a lot of similarities. And again, that helps us um, in getting leverage out of what we've already built, but also solving really, really big customer pain points um, for, for larger organizations and more complex organizations. And can you give us kind of a look at either some of the products that you've recently debuted or what's on the roadmap for 2025 that people can look forward to? Yeah, for sure. Uh, one I mentioned is around privileging and it's like a, a key area of growth for us. And I think the other key areas that we are really, really focusing on now, there's been a sea change in automation and AI and processes that we were previously, you know, having to do through deterministic workflows to solve for some of these very, very difficult uh, problems we are now exploring with AI to solve. Um, and, and the exciting thing for us is that just means, again, operational efficiency for us in delivering the outcome for the customer, which then ret in return reduces those turnaround times, increases the accuracy, um, delivers on the outcomes that we already are effectively contracted to and, and trying to help the customer. And so a lot of uh, effort is going there to really, really drive um, value that we know we already can drive and, and keep driving those times down and driving the quality up. And over the, over, I don't know, the course of the next few years, since you mentioned AI, how much of like a deep impact do you think it's going to have on this category? Or how do you think this entire space will kind of unfold, evolve, grow over the next handful of years? Yeah, and I, I, 
you know, it's part of the reason why I'm here and why I'm so excited about this. I think like when you look at some of the processes and as I've learned about some of the processes for these healthcare organizations, what you find is that the teams internally are struggling to deal with the level of complexity and the inbuilt knowledge. But a lot of the decision making is somewhat rote. It's not like a lot. It's not a lot of, um, let's say, uh, thinking time to to figure out and and also like you know healthcare outcome decision making that's happening, especially the areas that we're looking at. So when we think about that, we believe that there's just a lot of opportunity to take off and look at all the different workflows. What are the different different pieces? Where can they be automated and be very specific with that and picking off things that we think can can make change. So if I fast forward three to five years, not only in provider operations, but you can imagine areas um, and, and some of our customers in revenue cycle management are going to be thinking about how do we get more outcome from what we're already doing? Uh, because a lot of the, the operations can be you know, written out and, and enumerated, which we do in our platform through orchestration to know exactly what the process is to follow up with a pair. So th there's just a lot of opportunity now that we have a ton of data and transactions flowing through our system um, to really take that on. Yeah, it'll be it'll be exciting to see kind of where it goes from here and just how many of these processes you can offload. Like, I, do you, If you had to guess at a slice of the pie, can we fully automate this? Will there always be a can we have a provider up and running across every network in in a week, or is that a pipe dream? Yeah, so I I think it's it's going to be an interesting uh, thing to get to. I think the true uh, the true limitations there are just on how payers are actually processing um, uh, these files, and as we are starting to get into relationships with payers, like what are the incentives there? How can we make this a lot faster? What are things that we could do? to standardize our data format such that when they get to those pairs, it's actually easier for them to process as well. So I think it is a system uh, and a game of chipping away at the problem from the provider side of the business. And that's what we are doing today in making that process way easier and standardizing the outputs that, that then get to the pairs. And then, you know, eventually like solving and helping those problems for the, for the pairs as well. Um, do you, do we think that, you know, it can be hundred percent automated? I, I would be lying if I told you that we, we could solve all the problems. But what we know is that the more that we offload this, the more time these organizations are going to be able to focus on their providers delivering care and doing the thing that they, you know, we're setting out to do, which is actually help patients. Um, and that's what, what keeps us, you know, thinking about how do we automate more? How do we get less out of the way? How do we make sure that they're billable? How do we make sure that they can get to patients as fast as possible? That, you know, that's what drives us. So we're going to do everything we can to get to that, that dream state. Nice. That seems seems like a great goal, great North Star to be striving for. Um, Aaron, really appreciate you walking us through the platform and walking us through kind of this entire space. If we could leave viewers, maybe organizations struggling with provider operations, network management, is there is there anything, any advice you would give them if they're struggling with these things? Obviously, by medallion, great advice. But if we could do, if we could do something a little more zoomed out than that. Yeah, I, mean, I think one thing that one thing that I think has been helpful for us internally in looking at our own um, product operations and the automations. I, a lot of organizations have spent a lot of time in this area, but really getting down into the brass tacks and the funnel of where you're having trouble in getting the outcomes. Is it from getting engagement from your providers to get the right information? Is it from um, actually enumerating what the best and most efficient processes are to get files or, or, or enrollments done? Is it in um, just fundamentally having the staff with the knowledge to get this uh, uh, done? Having a clear understanding of that and pinpoint and like really looking at the process end to end is where you can find the problems. Um, and just like, you know, I guess in product management, any good funnel, there are there's findings in there that you can that can help you make changes to your organization, whether or not you're employing software services or anything like Medallion, to, to be honest, to just identify the problems and really find out where to spend time. And a great note to end the interview on, Aaron. Really enjoyed uh, speaking with you today. Thanks again for walking us through everything um, and for coming on the show. Awesome. All right, everyone. That's been the Digital Health Wire show. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.